Hello friends, welcome back once again to another video on about learning series. I think RFC or remote function call, you definitely have used quite often, right? When we do certain system integration, uh, we need to call this kind of an RFC as a protocol, as a function model, which are remotely enabled. And we just, you know, call them to get certain data across the systems. Or sometimes we perform some create, update, or delete operations remotely from one system to other system. And these RFCs, uh, there are lots of progress happen. Uh, possibly you have heard about something called TRFC, QRFC, and recently SAP offered something called BGRFC, right? So question would be like, which kind of RFCs are they, and in which context these are supposed to be used or leveraged? Now you have heard something called a synchronous RFC. Why synchronous? Because when I'm making a call from system A, because system A is a client in this case, and the request goes to the server, which is system B, where actually the remote function uh, enable function model is actually available. So I'm getting, I'm just calling the function model. So as a synchronous call means, it's the session should get some hold till I'm receiving some response back from system B. Why this is important? Because certain cases we really need certain, you know, uh, immediate response. We cannot hold on, right? Uh, we have to just wait. Uh, till I'm getting some activities performed in system. In the TRFC or transactional RFC, it talks about a session or LUW which just completely dedicated for one transaction to perform. And it will be either complete means committed or rollback, right? So that is how uh, the TRFC is designed. And if some case that system B is not active for some reason, then some uh, background job will be scheduled which can perform TRFC later. So this is only one uh, one time in a session, this function model can be called in one time. So this is how this three RFC is you know, been designed. Whereas uh, QRFC, the name itself implies it will create a Q kind of thing. Means if you want to perform sequential operation or kind of a serialization, let's say for example, you want to create some data first. Once the data creation is successful, then only you want to update certain portion of the data right certain fields of the transaction data in that case this qrfc would be a good choice and now in this diagram i'm just showing it's kind of a queue that i wanted to uh, represent and this sequence uh sequen sequentially i'm just calling current function model depending on the parameters that you can just make a call from a client side but this is called an outbound queue through which the request going to be uh, sent from the client or system a and it will of course reach system B. Now, if the system B is not an SAP system, a non-SAP system, then of course that system B doesn't have any idea about the client queue configuration, that how the client is actually sending requests to in which sequence they're not aware of, okay? But if it's a uh, system B is an SAP system, then they can configure uh, this kind of, you know, uh, stuff completely as an inbound queue right because it's an sap system so they know about how the client actually make a request to and accordingly they can you know in the inbound queue they can also organize that request and they will perform uh, based upon that sequence right so that's kind of a realization kind of a scenario where you can use this qrfc concept now finally the bg rfc or background rfc this is a very powerful one and it's latest and greatest thing from SAP side and SAP is recommending to use it and they are saying there is no need to use TRFC and QRFC because both the various variation or variance is available in this particular technology or concept. Actually, it is an asynchronous based call means you have a lots of data that you want to do in a parallel processing and you want to offload the task. You don't really need to wait until the process is completed. So those kind of, you know, improvement of performance if you want to achieve this is the choice that you should go with and we can make a you know kind of the server b we can make this kind of uh, operations in an asynchronous way okay so this is what the purpose for but but to spin up this bg rfc we need to do certain configurations uh we have to create a few destinations and also we have to uh, do certain scheduler configurations this we can do in a transition called abs bg rfc conf right 
and uh, interestingly in bgrfc uh, we can configure multiple schedulers per application server right to improve the performance ideal is not needed but if you want you can do that whereas in qrfc and trfc uh, you have a dedicated uh, scheduler only to schedule this kind of stuff right so more improved version is this one and this is the recommended one also you'll be getting uh, interacting with one other transaction code called sbg rfc mon it's a monitoring transaction code so if any background task gets fails because of some technical error and we can validate in this transaction code and we can also uh, debug and see like what's went wrong so we'll see that how to debug this background task uh, while doing this uh, bg rfc demo right so let's get into this demo program and i'll show you everything and step by step and but before that subscribe my channel if you have not done yet don't forget to hit the bell icon as it will intimate you the moment i upload a new content so you should not miss out any new topic that i'm going to publish right head over to our development system now and just do something hands-on and make our hands dirty to start our configuration for the background rfc we'll start with this transaction called sbg rfc conf and uh, which will take you to this kind of an interface First, we'll go with the end of this tab called Define Supervisor Destination. And there, I, you just need to create one background RFC destination. This is what I just created. Any name you can give. I have given like BG RFC Dest. So if you click on that, you have to give this destination name and the user through which you want to connect to that system. All right. So as, as I'm just using my same system as a both client as well as server, so I have given this system, uh, you know, user credentials. So next, what I did, I created called some inbound destination. The, any name you can give. And this is what I have given. And here I can put the, the server. Okay. A logon server group. You can connect with your basis team to get that uh, server group that you need to configure for. Next, I came to this tab called scheduler destination and uh, this is the destination name for which the scheduler i have configured this is actually the default value and finally the scheduler for the app server i told right for background rfc you can create multiple uh, you know, scheduler uh, for this uh, different app server but the default entry i have uh, i have just you know selected i didn't create anything extra this is the default value that i just you know add it if you click on this create button this is the default that i just you know considered okay and finally uh, once you do that uh, this is the auto kind of a configuration that will also see all right now one thing to note when you create this supervisor destination what will happen behind the scene uh, it will also create an above layer uh, destination that you can see in sm59 so let's check this out also if you expand this above connection you'll see this kind of bg rfc disk let's double click and see what's there in the login security the same sort of you know details which the user id and password that you will set same thing will reflect so once we are uh, done with this configuration this are mandatory okay you can create inbound and outbound separately i have just created only inbound as i've just shown correct so next is the background rfc uh, let's check this out what this rfc uh, will do for us so let's go to ac37 so this is the function model that i have created it's a remote enabled function model as you can see right and in the source code it's pretty simple what i'm trying to say actually i'll call this back, uh, function model which will actually create certain application log okay as a background way so that is what the demo that we'll see uh, this is what the corresponding SLG1 object and sub object in case you are not sure how to uh, configure them you can do it from SLG0 transaction so there you can uh, I have basically added this one as my uh, object if you double click this is my sub object okay this two I just created this configuration is needed all right now I added a simple message uh, and input for this function model i have taken some input parameter as a record i'm just assuming when i'll call this function model i'll pass this record as an input parameter okay 
and I'm just framing the message that I want to log in the application log server. Okay, uh, RFC function model is all, all set for my demo. So let's call this. I have also created a fun program to call that function model. So let's see what this program does. So it's a very simple program. Certain uh, variables I just declared. So background RFC destination inbound. And I have to pass this inbound destination, which is over here. We created this one. Right? And this is mandatory. If you don't pass this destination, it will give a short term. Okay. So this is how we get the object reference function model. This is our function model. Right, we'll call this function model in loop and each iteration I'll pass certain uh, information or string kind of thing. Okay, and while I'm passing this, what I'll do, I need to use this syntax called in background unit, okay, not in background task, and followed by this unit I need to pass, which is an again an object reference. And how this has been prepared? Just prepared by calling this create trfc unit. You see, I am I am using transactional rfc. Similarly, you can go with the create QRFC unit if you want to go for the QRFC process. So once this unit gets created, you just need to pass it over here. And finally, I'm just making this commit work so that this one gets triggered. And finally, I'm just, you know, giving the message as a print just to share that, yes, this is actually a trigger, something like that. So what I'm expecting, the moment I'll trigger this, what will happen? It will create some application log which you can see through slg1 transaction code if i just check with today's date i don't see any any log found perfect so now i'll run this one voila it successfully says the two records record one and record two these two been passed uh, in an iteration way and two individual this background task gets called now if i go there and just execute awesome we see this uh application log gets created by our background task and here are this uh, the details one is for program two uh, sorry record two and other one is the record one right so our program is actually working but in case it fails for some reason or how to debug so next we'll see that one so for that let's open our function model and make some intentional mistake uh, what mistake I can do? Let's assume that uh, the parameter name is i underscore s log, right? S underscore log. So let's remove that i. Okay. What will happen? And definitely at the runtime, it will not able to find this parameter and possibly this uh, this background task will fail. So let's activate this. That way, no syntax error. But at least at the runtime, it will fail. So now I'll go back and I'll again run. Uh, this two records I'm just passing again, same same logic. But uh, this time I'm expecting the background task is supposed to be failed. So this two message as usual, that came. But we have to check where it's failing. For that, we will be using one a separate transaction uh, we discussed called SDG RFC demo in or monitor. So now if I execute that, and let's in this is our inbound thing right so if i double click we see certain inbound so our task will be on 12th right so if i double click on that it says that missing parameter in call function like something actually failing when i call that now if you want to validate this that whether it's working fine and what happened you can right click go to unit analysis now we can go for a debug unit if i go there uh, debug then I can go back with F7 and now if I just call this one shift F8 now if I just click F6 or 11 boom missing parameter so I know some some something problem with that first function model itself at least I know something goes wrong if everything goes fine right no no error happens then I'll not be able to see this function model gets uh, logged over there in this monitor mon transaction monitor transaction then how to validate in that case correct so that will now learn and for that we'll okay open our program and we'll put a breakpoint this time okay and now we'll run this and we'll go to the settings and change debugger profile in this pop-up we'll click this one called trfc in background task 
okay and click on okay now if i run again this is uh, triggered but one difference would be if i go to our monitoring transaction if i refresh you see now it's a warning these two things actually locked we are not sending uh, for the processing we just the uh, we just lock that uh, to be executed properly so now i can select right click go to unit analysis and again debug and we can validate what's going on right so if error happens anyway we know it will come over here if you don't have any error then also we can have a provision to lock them not to process and you know we can validate against the monitor transaction debug it and fix our issues right that pretty much for today's video uh, thanks for watching till the end let me know in the comment section if it was helpful to you again we'll see you in the next video till then goodbye